is my theory. Whoever made that noise made it intentionally. So we would hear it and find him. Find him. Find him. and find him. Find him. Hey, what's up everybody? How's it going? This is Michael Buffington. I am back today for another drawing session. Hella drawing with Michael Buffington. I hope you guys have been having fun. Um, so, we haven't really come up with a permanent name, but we're tentatively calling it 
hella drawing. And the reason why we are tentatively calling it hella drawing is because that is what I do. Every day, all day, all the time, I draw like a maniac. As a matter of fact, they call me the Drawaholic. I started the group called Drawaholics Anonymous. And the reason why is because I am an absolute draw hog. This is what I do. I talked about this a few weeks ago, but one of the things that I'm doing to myself, I say doing to myself because I'm, I'm tormenting myself and putting myself through the paces. I don't ask you guys to do anything that I myself wouldn't do. So one of the things that I'm doing is I am doing 1,000 full-figured character sketches. And I have a bunch of them here, and this is just some, some that I did within the last, you know, a uh, few days or so. Can you see that? Okay, here's, right? So I just sit there and I just draw. Uh, yesterday I put in um, quite a few hours sketching. And I just, I mean, when I'm doing an exercise like this, um, you know, I'm not, I don't have like uh, a lot of story um, all the time. Sometimes I'll think I have a little idea or a thought in my mind about something that I want to do, but there's nothing really um, specific. Sometimes I'll think, oh, I want this to be like a, like a Bedouin warlord or, you know, a Viking, you know, a Viking warrior. You know, sometimes they're they're not the best. I don't I don't particularly like this one. But when you're doing a thousand full figure sketches, you're gonna have some that you're not that crazy about, um, and then you're gonna have some that are amazing. And when it's all said and done, maybe you'll have uh, a few hundred that are amazing, and that's what goes into the book. Um, here's some more. All right, and like I said, I'm just I am just playing with shape and ideas and costume design and all this kind of stuff that I'm doing is going to become fodder for designs later. They're going to inspire stories. They're going to inspire design. Um, it allows me to play freely. You know, this is this is just hella drawing. It's just lots of sketching and I'm just having lots of fun and, and that's really it. And you can see I'm just drawing all kinds of stuff. Right? playing with different genres from post-apocalyptic like the one you just saw to something a little bit more ancient or maybe space opera-ish something sci-fi you see so I, I I really do just try everything something a little bit more fantasy like maybe here's my my samurai, hey, right? Here's my creepy space opera guy. So, you know, I, I'm just drawing and drawing and drawing because you know what I figure? I figure if I do a thousand of these, I'm gonna come up with something cool. And maybe I'll have a few hundred really cool drawings by the time I'm done. Maybe I'll have a few more hundred okay drawings. And then maybe I'll have a couple hundred drawings that I'm not particularly crazy about, and that's okay, right? We don't have to be perfect all the time. We just have to, we just have to be consistent, okay? All right, so I just wanted to show you that just to kind of give you guys an idea of what I do uh, on my free time. Now, I like to draw digitally. Uh, drawing digitally is awesome. As I've talked to you guys in the past, there are a lot of advantages to drawing digitally. You can go into Photoshop and immediately fix something. You can change the proportion, you can resize things, you can warp things if it's not quite, if it's misdrawn. You can do a lot of things digitally that you couldn't do traditionally on paper because there is no undo button on paper. However, it's really important that you guys draw on paper as well because there's a visceral connection, a tactile connection between your hand and your brain. And something happens when you are putting pencil to paper all the time. For some reason, when people draw only digitally, I've always noticed that their drawing skills in general are a little bit lower than somebody who does both digital and traditional. And with somebody who draws a lot traditionally, um, when they move over to the digital realm, which is what I did, because I started drawing far, you know, way before they had anything that I could draw on digitally, um, 
the transition is a bit easier. And so that's why I'm able to jump over here onto the Wac Wacom Cintiq that I'm using and, and really um, just kind of uh, hit the ground running because all I have to learn are the nuances of the pen and how it interacts with the screen or the tablet. And the other part of it is just learning the software and the little tips and tricks and shortcuts and things like that, both of which at this point I know very well. So when you can combine a strong foundation in traditional drawing with a strong foundation in digital drawing, you have the best of both worlds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move right over here. Um, last week, I just did a lot of exploration. I was having fun. I was just drawing different heads, thinking of different characters and things like that. And now I'm gonna take some of that and I'm gonna get a little bit more refined and I'm gonna start taking these thumbnails and head sketches that I did um, and I'm going to draw some characters. So let's head over to the screen. So this is what I had um, last week. This is where I ended. Lots of really fun exploration that was happening here. And um, I'm gonna pick up right where I left off. Now, let's see. Um, I had some really cool stuff, obviously, last time. Um, do I wanna draw on this character? I kinda, you know, I really, I thought I was drawing this character, let's see. Yeah, I, I knew I was drawing that character. Let's look at him. You know, this is cool. I, I like the overall sort of design that I got going on here, um, but I don't like his face for whatever reason. So let's see. Here we go. So if I take the head of this character here, I'm going to copy and paste and just drag that up here so I can have a little compare and contrast. And I'm going to redraw that head to be a little bit more close to that because now that I come back to it, I'm like, you know, I'm not quite crazy about that. So let's go back to that and let's redraw that head. Okay. All right, so I'm just kind of trying to maintain the spirit of this drawing a little bit more closely.
Okay. Yeah, that's that's feeling a little bit more. Actually, that's feeling a lot more like maybe what I had intended. I'm not quite sure what happened in that drawing. Maybe I was tired. I don't know. You know, sometimes that happens. You'd be surprised how much we are affected as artists when we're, you know, not feeling right, whether it's uh, us being tired or hungry or, you know, sick. Um, or just emotionally not feeling well, you know, w when you're when you're out of balance um, Physically for whatever reason or emotionally uh, one of the first things to go is your creativity. So it's really it's really important that you guard um, Those things and take care of yourself so that you can keep creating these awesome drawings and awesome ideas I'm Just gonna get in here on the lips Okay. All righty. There we go. Here's here's something. There we go. And this is coming right along. That feels a little bit better. Now I got to get that jaw right because that jaw is looking a little tricky, and if I don't nail that jaw, that's gonna ruin everything. So, you know, let's get that jaw right. Well, look at that. Nice, handsome, mandible, strong-jawed villain. Aren't those, aren't those the worst kind of villains, the good-looking ones? See, the ugly ones, you can see them coming a mile away, you know? Uh, you know that Venom is ugly and unattractive and, and you, you run in the opposite direction, but when you see uh, a good-looking villain, um, then it becomes a little bit more challenging to see that they're actually a villain because you're so attracted to their looks, right? And that could be part of your story as well. Remember, story drives design. As a matter of fact, um, as for forgive me for this morbid example, but um, I do recall you know, uh, as a kid hearing the story of uh, the serial killer, Ted Bundy, and from what I understand, he was like a really handsome, well-spoken guy. So um, his victims didn't really see um, what he was trying to do coming, so unfortunately. Um, so I think the best villains are, are probably, or I'm sorry, is there such a thing as a best villain, right? If you're a villain, you're probably not best anything other than evil. But um, I, I, what I was trying to say or articulate was I think the most effective villains would probably be people who are kind of good looking. They get people to go along with them, right? Um, they've got to be attractive in some way. They've got to be charismatic. Um, so if you're just hideous and ugly looking, that's that's probably gonna hurt your game a little bit, so. Um, let me just, I see here's where the undo comes in handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. Okay, now is the important part. So I want to get this hair. I'm going to draw the neck in, even though I'm planning to give him long hair, I'm going to draw the neck in just for context. Okay. 
So far, so good. Let's let's switch that on and off. Very nice. Very villainous looking. Got those heavily arched eyebrows. All right, so let's give him a nice little haircut. Villain haircut. <laughs> what does a villain haircut look like? Well, we'll try and figure that out. How's that? Something sleek and, hey, maybe he combs it back, right? And it kind of wraps into that. Yeah, yeah, what do you think, huh? Not too shabby. All right, now for the top part, you know, I can do a couple of different things, right? Let's start another layer just so I can play around a little bit. I can either slick it back just like this, which, Actually, that doesn't look too bad at all. Um, I can slick that back just like so. Hmm, maybe I wanna get that head shape just a little bit more correct though, right? I got the right idea, the wrong execution. Um, let's undo that again. Uh, oh goodness, this is giving me fits. I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit so I can use my whole arm. How does that look? <laughs> looks like looks like he's wearing a headpiece. Um, but let, let's let me let's put some texture in here. Maybe that'll do. Maybe that'll do him some wonders. Okay, maybe that doesn't look as cool as I thought it was gonna look, so I'm gonna drop in another layer. Maybe we'll give him some spiky hair. What do you think, guys? Now that's a little bit too close to this in terms of shape and size, so I'm gonna trim that back a little bit because you don't want things to be monotonous in design. Let's zoom out and take it. Now that looks a lot more interesting. Yeah, right? I mean, that looks cool, but this looks Super cool. And that's what we want, right? As designers, we don't want to just settle for cool. We want super cool. If we can figure out how to make it super cool. And in my opinion, that was super cool. I could be tooting my own horn, but you know. Sometimes, hey, hey, we can't always be self-deprecating as artists, right? Sometimes we have to know when we've done something good and we have to give ourselves a little bit of props. Okay. Um, so that's looking pretty cool right there. Let me just clip that little piece out and kind of shore up this hairline. Get, make sure he's got that widow's peak with the male pattern baldness happening. He's a villain, but he can't afford hair plugs just yet. He needs to he needs to take over the world first so he can have a little bit more expendable income. Um, okay. There we go, get that out of the way. And do I wanna, do I wanna cut this piece out as well? Yeah, why not?
Nothing like drawing and listening to Jamaican rapping as well. Hmm, I like that little extra, extra bit of texture. Now he looks really, yeah, really like not a nice guy. You know what? I also want to darken up those, the underside of those lids to make them look a little creepier. Tricks of the trade, tricks of the trade, guys. Why not the top as well? Give him, give him a little eyeliner. No, he looks like Prince. Maybe you guys don't know who Prince is. Prince is only one of the greatest musicians who ever walked the face of the earth. If you like David Bowie, then you should probably find out who Prince was. All right. Oftentimes I'll make references to the cult classic Purple Rain, the movie which was released in the year 1984. And my students will look at me like I'm crazy and I will say, wait, you've never seen Purple Rain? And they'll shake their head and say no. And uh, the only thing I can say to that is that anybody who has not seen Purple Rain is culturally deprived. Uh, great moment in pop culture. Uh, the movie didn't age terribly well. There were some things in there that was like, uh, uh, maybe a little cringy today in the year 2019. Oh, I'm sorry, 2020 now, in the year 2020. But hey, you know what? It was a different time. But good movie nonetheless. And certainly, great musician, great music. Okay, let's see. Now we're talking, look at that. He's looking real solid. Mm, mm, mm. I knew that I, I mean, come on, look at the difference. He, you know, this is, see, this is the mark of a growing artist, right? When you can go back to something and self-correct, I mean, I clearly saw that, um, that this wasn't working. Um, I clearly saw that that wasn't working and you know I didn't settle um, I said you know I need to get a little bit closer to what my original intent was and I think it'll feel better and it feels a lot better I think maybe I was trying to make him look a little bit more um, creature like in this one I'm not sure exactly why I chose that path but it didn't work and you know one of the things that you have to realize as an artist is when something doesn't work it just doesn't work you have to put down your ego and be willing to go back and say, you know what, this isn't working for this reason and this reason and that reason, and then go to a new drawing or a revised drawing and make it better. And if you feel like something's wrong, um, then you should go and get some feedback from other people. And as a matter of fact, even if you don't feel like anything's wrong, show it to other people and get opinions from them. You know, there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors. Always remember that. So it's really important to, to do that. And I like this a lot better than what I had originally in this little sketch. So very happy with that. And so I'm gonna go back to that and just see if there's anything I can do to kind of tweak, add a little texture. And I think I'm good right now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this is my base layer here. Actually, you know what? Let me just let me group. Let me copy this whole group. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm going to a couple little tweaks. I want to make sure these um, lines aren't intersecting. And there we go. That way we don't we don't have these lines running through each other. Now that looks pretty good. So now I think I'm in a good place. So I'm going to flatten that, copy that and throw that together in a folder. And I'm gonna call this head. 
And now those lines are just a touch on the dark side, right? So I'm gonna take that and turn the opacity up on the top layer just a little bit. Now that feels a little bit better to me. A um, little bit more intense in this, but not as black and dark as it was. Okay, so now we're in good shape. Now, um, oh, I'm noticing something about the head that maybe. Ah, yeah, you know what I'm seeing? I probably should add just so it's understood that there's hair on that side. And then I'm going to crunch this down here. I'm gonna copy that because I'm gonna make a small tweak to the head. I'm gonna warp this a little bit because it feels a little narrow. So I'm gonna pull, pull this out. Okay, let's take this one. All right, let's look at them side by side. Yeah, I think that feels a little bit better, giving him a little bit more room up here in the cranium. <laughs> hey, what's up, Butters? How's it going, buddy? Um, yes, I'm not playing Prince because for whatever reason, um, I'm not exactly sure how to, but this is not my music per se, but I hope you're enjoying it. Um, why adjust the opacity and not the color of the lines? Um, because I haven't gotten there yet. Um, uh, right now I'm just doing black and white and just having a little fun with it. And that's about it. Um, and I'm, I'm going, this is my process from last week. So I'm just kind of figuring some things out right now, but uh, I am gonna come back to that. So now, now that I've got this working really, you know, kind of at a good place, I'm going to come back to that sketch wherever it is. Here we go. Let's say body rough, but I'm, I'm gonna make some changes to this. Um, and the reason why is because this whole thing is boring. So I'm gonna tighten this, or I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to I want to give him legs. I want to give him actual legs. And I certainly want to cut that head out. So let's take Let's take our new head. Already feels better, right? Look at that. So much better. This, and again, this is the cool thing about drawing digitally is you can do stuff like this. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to, um, I'm going to play around and draw some legs. Let me just do a little proportion check because I think the head in relation to the body feels a touch small. Does it? Is it? Let me see. What if I make this a little bit bigger? Okay. That already feels better. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn down the opacity for that body rough. And I'm gonna go back on top of this. Now, um, 
when I was doing my last, um, the last drawing that I was working on, I talked to you guys a lot about, um, I talked to you guys a lot about the importance of getting the body down underneath. So I'm just gonna quickly sketch just like a little generic body just to make sure all the anatomy is right. I'm gonna give him kind of a, an ectomorph body, but maybe like a sexy ripped up F ectomorph where you can see all his musculature. Like my man definitely does his burpees. Let's check that. Uh, one, two, three. Navel's gonna be the right about there and four. Okay, we are moving right along, folks. By the way, if you guys have any ideas or any thoughts or any comments, feel free to join the chat and drop, drop me a line in the chat just like Butters did, who pretends like he doesn't like Prince, but in reality, he probably plays him a lot when he's drawing because it's so inspiring. Mm. Okay, let's see. Okay, so that means this arm is a bit too long, so I'm gonna have to readjust that. And that's okay, right? Because we're working digitally, so we can easily make those types of adjustments. And we're actually gonna resize it a little bit too. Okay, we're gonna drop that and... Um, Actually, no, I'm not gonna drop that. Let me bring that right back where it was. And there you go. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our red line. I just wanna make sure. Man. Make him nice and long. And gangly. So I'm gonna kind of elongate his his legs a little bit because I want him to feel long and gangly and ectomorphic, kind of like Jafar or you know Maleficent or you know somebody like that. Right. Okay, so we gotta get these feet down.
Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think this leg is feeling a little long though, so let's let's grab this leg here. Whoops. Ah. So frustrating now with the way the transform tool works in Photoshop. It's so different than than in all of the previous versions. Okay, that feels about right. Okay, so um, as you can see, you know, I really like to lay down the body underneath here. I, I always do this, you know, this is really important to me to get the anatomy down underneath, especially when you're wearing some sort of big costume or some sort of gown or something that's hanging like that. Because how do you know, how, how, how is it gonna feel as if there's a body underneath? And it has to, right? There's gotta be the feeling that there's a body underneath. If you don't get that right, then you're making a mistake, you're missing something. So I like to get down this rough skeleton or rough anatomy underneath. It doesn't have to be super detailed because I'm not gonna be showing any skin, but I like to get that down so that when I draw on top of it, whatever is hanging off of it doesn't look out of place or it doesn't look like it's misdrawn or misshapen. So let's just turn that down here. And we're gonna grab that body rough copy here. Turn that opacity down even more. Okay, and then we're gonna go on top of that. And now, even though I kind of have a rough drawing on, uh, on top of that, I'm going to actually um, redraw um, re I'm going to actually redraw the rough part of the outfit okay So let's let's get in here. Mm -hmm. Do I even want that? I, you know, I don't know that I want that collar piece anymore. Maybe that's not what I want. Maybe instead I want. Something like, so. but it's gotta hang like these, it's running, wrapping around the chest. So let's just come in on and delete, oops. I didn't realize I had to put that on the same layer. Let's put that on a different layer. Good thing I caught that. Okay, so let's make it appear as if it's wrapping around the body a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. Back to where I was. Let's go back to my blue layer. I wonder if I want... So this will be fabric here that's hanging down. So 
it'll come to a point and then, yeah, that, oh, that looks so cool. Look at that shape, super cool. Happy accidents. I wonder if you should have like a beard or a goatee, right? Don't know if villains have goatees. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> he looks so villainy, doesn't he? <laughs> Wanna give him some lamp button chops, sideburns. Here, let's give him a mustache like this. <laughs> actually, actually, that kind of looks cool. Let's see. That doesn't look bad. See what happens when you're goofing off, right? You can always find something cool to add. You just have to draw a little loose and have fun. The problem is, when you guys are so uptight, you're so worried about making a mistake that you don't wanna experiment and you draw the same thing over and over and over. One of the biggest reasons why people don't want to experiment when they're drawing is because they're afraid. What are you afraid of? You're afraid of making a bad drawing, uh, a mistake, something that doesn't come out um, that's appealing aesthetically. But here's the thing, you're never gonna be perfect. You're always gonna do things. Even when you're trying your absolute best to be perfect, you're always gonna do things that don't look quite right. So you have to sort of free yourself of that you know, of that um, fear of making a mistake or doing a bad drawing and just play. I mean, you know, I'm not on the clock right now. I mean, other than we have two hours to finish the drawing, I'm not on the clock right now. I'm not, you know, on a deadline or anything like that. So I can just play. And when you guys are drawing in your sketchbooks and you're drawing at home, drawing for yourself, drawing at your own leisure, you should be able to play and be free and have fun. That's so important because look at me, I was goofing off. I was like, maybe I'll give him a goofy mustache. I was really just being silly, just being goofy and just having fun. And what happens when I put that in there? I was like, hmm, oh my goodness, that doesn't look half bad. So just by fooling around, by being loose and having fun, I did something that I actually liked. And those are the kind of things that happen when, that, uh, that happen when you draw loosely and when you're having fun. That's the biggest thing you always have to remember. You gotta have fun. You cannot draw with fear. The two, the two things, creating and being afraid are kind of counterproductive. You have to be in a good space to create, right? And yes, there are some times where you're gonna be at work and you're gonna be feeling, you know, very out of sorts. You're gonna be feeling, as the kids say, some type of way. And you still need to be able to pull it together and deliver on time and meet your deadlines. That's called being a professional. But, you know, that gets exhausting if you have to draw like that all the time. You wanna just be able to draw freely, have fun, and hey, you know, even if it doesn't look, you know, the best, if you keep doing it, it'll look better. And that's the key thing you have to remember. It's not about being the best, but it is about being better. You wanna get better all the time. And hey, maybe you take a step back every now and then, but you'll take two steps forward as long as you keep putting pencil to paper. So that's the biggest thing that you have to remember. I found a happy accident, I think I'm gonna keep it. We'll see, but it looks good, at, at least right now, and I'm gonna keep going. Look at this, I have a buy here that asked me if I wanna become famous. Hmm, what should I do? Mm. Do I want to become famous? Who doesn't want to become famous? Anybody wants to become famous, you just don't want to be infamous. That's the key thing, right? Famous, sure. Infamous, not so much. Okay, so we're gonna... All right. OK. 
Okay. That looks pretty cool. I like that little sort of wrist thing that we have going on here. Let's get those hands in there. I don't have any hand reference. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to rely on the many years of experience drawing hands and hope that turns out good. But um, some of you who are um, a little earlier on in your experience, don't be afraid to get up and go get some hand reference, whether you have to ask somebody to model for you or you become the hand model yourself, just snap a few pictures and then you know upload that and use that it's, it, it's a lifesaver sometimes don't be afraid even the pros do it that's a little bit too long right i think that's a little bit too long let me move that over a smidge yeah okay and of course that's there's my thumb This music is hilarious. I feel like I'm at a European EDM festival listening to Avinci. Okay, we're gonna That feels about that feels good, right? We'll see how it comes out when I actually draw it, right? That's when I'll really figure out whether or not something me is messed up or not. Um and quick way to kind of hide some of the anatomy is putting gloves on a hand. That always helps. Um, yes, that's, that's definitely a bot. <laughs> they asked me if I want to be famous, but like I said, um, being famous is fine. I just don't want to be infamous. If I can stay away from being infamous, all the rest is cool with me. Um, I did not have a prompt. Uh, what I did was I started with a bunch of head sketches and um, and I just decided I wanted to do something a little like a space opera villain sort of. And, um, and so I went with that one. So yeah, I'm kinda, I'm, kind of making it up as I, as I go. I mean, I have um, an idea in my head of what I want, and, um, and so that's helping me expedite the process a little bit. I think I like that silhouette much better. Yeah, I like that silhouette much better. It looks a little bit more um, it looks a little bit more interesting to me. Um, cool dwarf games. What game guy is this? He says, um, this isn't a specific game guy, my friend. This is just, this is just something I am just sketching. You have joined a stream called Hella Drawing with Michael Buffington, and we are just hella drawing. And right now we're just drawing a character. I'm resizing his hand a little bit because it feels small. And um, I'm gonna do that same thing with his hand over here. Can I draw hella dwarfs? That's a great question. Um, I can draw anything. But the, most, but the more important question is, 
do I want to draw hella dwarves? And the answer is no. <laughs> Maybe I'll draw a dwarf uh, after this. But for now, I've got to get this hand right. That's my chief priority, more than anything. It's getting this hand right. Because the hand is jacked up. Yeah, that's not looking right. We're gonna get rid of that. Put that over here. Mm-hmm. Hand turn to the outside. You can draw. Alrighty then. Well, hey, cool dwarf games. You go ahead and do that, my friend. Do it. You are free to draw whatever you want in your sketchbook. How's that hand coming? That hand is coming out jacked up. I'm just not, I'm just struggling with that a little bit. You know, this happens sometimes, right? I always find it a little bit easier to draw certain things, um, certain things out that are challenging out traditionally. It just help, I don't know why. I have no idea what you're talking about. You're gonna have to decipher that for me, friend. I have no idea what you're talking about. Using my hand right now as a bit of reference. Let's pull that out. See if that <laughs> see if that helps at all. Okay. Now let's enlarge that hand. How's that feel? That feels stiff and maybe that feels a little better with it hanging down like that.
I can live with that. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll come back to that because clearly that's a mess. But um, for now, we're going to keep drawing. Okay, now I'm drawing some pants. They're going to be more like uh, leggings that you might see at a gym <laughs> than actual pants, but I'm just not going to give them bare legs because that would be a little bizarre. I wonder if these should come down to points. Maybe that should. I'll come back to that. Do I really want to go that long with the legs? How is that feeling right now? Is that feeling good or is it feeling weird? Nope, that's not quite right. Let's zoom in. So I, that's a little bit better, huh? Right? Got to know when something's not working. Super, super important. Okay, so we are moving right along. Going to have this other foot basically done. Yes. Uh-huh. Working pretty well. Okay. Boom. Okay. Let's 
So let's get that sort of necklace deal cooking. Let's give him a really big, huge medallion. Like a rapper, but a space opera rapper. Is that a new genre? I don't know, but. Really huge medallion with like a face on it. Something like that. I think we're in a good place right now. So right now we've got, um, let's turn off our body layer, so, and let's turn off our undersketch. So right now I think we've got it to uh, a pretty cool place. So we're gonna just pause right here and I'm gonna come back to it and we are gonna clean this thing up and, and finish it. So we'll be back in just a few.
Okay, we're back. We are back. Now we've got everything to a good place, right? And at this point, we just want to start cleaning stuff up. So let's. New layer, we're going to go all black. And so this is what we had here with the head. And now we're going to come back in and we're going to add some of these cool elements that I had been playing with earlier. Just trying to get the size of the stroke right. So let's add that goatee in. patch and give him a nice crazy looking goatee with multiple points in it. Aha, that looks pretty cool. I think I'm gonna fill in that um that goatee though. Give him a little accent point. It's feeling good, All right? If I want to design those, let's see how. <laughs> now that looks very, very evil. In fact, it looks like Jafar's evil brother. If you could imagine that. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this um, wherever that's. At. Let's see. Let's find that. Where did that? Where did that go? That's in the head. I'm gonna drop that a little lower because that uh boom. Okay. Now there we go.
and I'm gonna go on top of this and I first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on this this piece right here You see that nice, easy stroke? You know, one of the things that, that um, is really beautiful about this is I can get a really precise stroke because I am working so largely on a screen. It's a little bit different than working on paper. So I, there are some advantages. Um, and that's why I have this nice, big, beautiful Wacom Cintiq that was uh, so generously given to us by Wacom. This is top of the line stuff. So I don't know, you know, for example, like um, what, your financial situation is, but if you're an artist and you're serious about your art and you're serious about being a concept artist, this is definitely something that you're going to want to invest in. Um, I, you know, it's the, the one thing you never want to be cheap about is your tools. And the reason why is because your tools will pay themselves off. Um, and your Wacom Cintiq, that is going to be, um, that doesn't look quite right. That is going to be something that you are going to use to make money with for years to come after the investment. So trust me when I say that initial investment will pay itself off. So I strongly recommend uh, getting a Wacom Cintiq to work on. And um, it's just it's just so much nicer being able to paint um, or draw directly onto the screen. Um, what I don't recommend as much is the tablets for drawing. Um, tablets are great for painting, um, and the tap. The difference between the tablets and the screen is that with the tablets you can't um, draw directly onto the screen. You have to draw on a tablet, which, which kind of sits in your lap or on your table, and then that goes up on the screen. But here, with the Wacom Cintiq, you can draw directly on the screen, as you've been seeing me do um, this this whole time. So definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Okay. That's not quite right. I want to get that a little bit closer to right. Nope, that's not quite right either. Let me draw it. Let me pull it from this side. Okay. Alrighty, so this is working pretty well. I've got this um, moving right along in full speed. Let's zoom out a little bit just to check it out. That's looking pretty solid. All right, so let's go back to it. Um, I always do that. I accidentally put this on some of these layers up here, but you know what? It doesn't matter. It's all gonna gonna get linked up together. I am gonna. I'm just gonna call, call this final head. And I'm gonna copy that just so I am working off the copy.
Now we're going to zoom back in. Oh, oh, you know what? I have some of these longer lines here that I want to do. So you know what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually That didn't quite land the way I wanted it to. Bam, there we go, and there we go. Okay, that looks a little bit better, so let's come back up. And we are just gonna, uh, 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 and just bring it all together. Okay, so just linking that up. I've got, there we go, I've got this nice clean sort of centerpiece. Now the rest of it can be a little bit looser and, and grungier, but right here I want this to be slick and sleek, right? I want it to feel like a, something princely, right? So that's, that's nice and sleek and slick. And, and, um, and that's working pretty well. So now we're gonna move on to, um, the rest of this cloth here. All right, so Butter says, so a big issue I have with my line work is that after I put down my drawings, um, I put it down, my drawings feel flatter and like they have less depth. Um, you know, that's a, that's a very common problem. Um, and, um, you know, drawings are always going to feel a little bit more alive, if you will, and have a little bit more energy in the sketch stage than when you clean them up. You know, people, um, it's like, it's funny because you work really hard to clean up a drawing and to make it look super um, on point, and people will look at it and go, say things like, oh, I like the sketch better, and it's like, oh, you know, it's just like, ah, you know, you want to smack them you know but I get what they're saying they're 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 what they're trying to say um, without being able to articulate it is I really like the energy of your sketch and you kind of lost some of that you know in the in the final drawing um, and and so you know you you want to try and keep keep that as best as possible. You're going to lose some of that. You're going to lose some of that energy in your um, in your sketch, no matter what you do, you know, or in your cleanup, you know, no matter what you do. Um, now, there are ways to, to try and, you know, you can keep your final drawing a little bit looser, right? Um, I try not to make my drawings too tight, um, but you know, it just sort of happens. Um, but um, one of the other big ways that people don't realize is to watch your ellipses. Um, what do I mean by that? Your ellipses, your ellipses, like even that could wrap a little bit more. See, if you get those things wrapping around right, right, a little bit more. If you can get those things wrapping around right, then it won't feel like um, it's going flat. You know, it'll really feel like it's wrapping and it'll feel strong. That's going pretty good.
Let's see here. Yeah, that's working pretty well. All right, let me just. Get that finger in there. Get that first digit, second digit. And you know, I think this would be easy if I just gave him a glove. <laughs> I'm thinking about, I'm so tempted to give um, the character some sort of glove. came up pretty well. Okay, let's get that other finger in there. Boom, and the last one. Bam, there we go. And I think that looks pretty good. Give him a little glove. I don't know, it just, it helps. Why does he have a glove on? Because they look cool, no. <laughs> You always have to have a good reason for why you add something, right? Um, I'm giving him gloves because when he handles his dagger, it gives him a better grip. Of course, of course that's why, come on, come on. You gotta know these things. Okay, so we're moving on to this other arm here. And I'm gonna be moving just a little bit faster because um, I goof off a lot. And um, when I draw, actually I do this, <laughs> believe it or not, I do this when I'm by myself. That's how I have fun, you gotta have fun, right? Um, so, All right, this is looking pretty good. I, I need to add a little bit more. Um, these two folds are too, sim er, too similar, so I need to kind of alter that a bit.
Okay, we're moving at a pretty good pace here. Now I'm gonna get this other hand. I kind of struggled with this other hand um, earlier. So I'm actually going to drop it in on another layer. Hopefully doing this cleanup will make it a little easier than when I was trying to search and figure things out. <laughs> hey, that looks that, that looks fine to me, right? Can't complain, right? I mean, you can, but uh, what's the point? One, two, three. No, that's gonna have another little. Is that how I have fingers on a... Yeah, they're coming right above. Wait, is that the first knuckle or the second knuckle? Nope, first knuckle. Okay, gotta check. Consistency, all that jazz. Um, Okay, now we're doing pretty good. Let's get that other final finger down. Hey, that, you know what? <laughs> that looks good enough for me. I'm just gonna move on right now. We have just a few minutes left. Um, okay, let's get this. All right, let's 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 just do a quick assessment on what I have left. So I gotta get... Um, oh, I see what I have to do. I have to pull this down in here. Okay, and we're gonna get the pant legs. I'm trying to emulate bolts here. Um, one of the, you know, most important classes that I took when I was at the Academy of Art 
was a class called Clove Figure Drawing. And there aren't a lot of classes that really break Clove Figure Drawing down into a science in the way that Barbara Bradley does. And and um, it's immensely important when you're drawing folds from memory especially and you're trying to do something that looks a little bit more believable and realistic just understanding how folds you know um, how folds wrap and grow is hugely important so I'm gonna fix that with a little warp Technology. Actually, that was too much. It's worth it, but a little less. There we go. Ooh, moving right along. Okay, so I got that piece in there. Now I'm gonna go and finish the rest of that boom. But one thing I wanna do is I wanna put a little thickness there so you can kind of get a sense of the material. And you know, one of the things that I've, I've talked about in the past is layers of detail. Um, a lot of times people stop at the first or second layer of detail and you know, they don't add things like a little thickness there and then things look flat and so sometimes people don't understand why their drawings are looking flat and not only are, might they be struggling with ellipses but they're also struggling with little seemingly insignificant details like that and those are the kind of things that that I like to do that give my drawings uh, a little bit of life and believability Okay, here we go. Boom, right down there. I like that. That is working really well. Let's, you know what? Let's just a couple more folds. <laughs> I, as you can see, I'm partial to folds because they really do add something. Right? Makes things look believable. And that is what we want to do, right? Do we not? We want to get the viewer to be able to suspend their disbelief when they look at your drawings. Okay, so Okay, here we go. Look at this other. Put 
that line back. I actually like that. That was a mistake. Okay, let's get that line going over the center. Okay, so there's there's our boots that are done. And now we just gotta do this little back piece. Moving right along. Okay. to that, so I'm gonna break that up. There we go. Okay, same thing here. So that's pretty much it for the costume. I can turn that, where's that blue layer at? Okay, now the only thing left to do at this point is draw the crazy looking medallion. So we're just going to kind of wrap. Okay. Get these pieces in here and actually no 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 that, that should that should link up to some sort of hook. See, I think about how things work because that's what a good concept artist does. And you might be saying, oh yeah, well how do those things stay together? Well, that's because clearly there's some sort of string or something, right, right, right? <laughs> um, 
that runs through everything. Or maybe it's just magic. See, that's what that's what uh, concept artists do whenever they're being lazy, and they don't want to really fully like work something out, and something doesn't quite make sense. They say, "Well, well, it's magic." So I mean, it's fine, of course, right? Because magic fixes everything. Of course. Of course. I'm gonna need to move this down though a little bit. Okay, so all right now let me get this last final piece done um, just got to make sure I've kind of got a plan here That's a bit much there. There we go. Nice. Okay, that's working out pretty well. A little bit more detail. Boom, boom. And you can turn that layer off. And there we go. So let's, that's right there. Let's go, let's group that, that is, let's call that medallion. I, I don't know what, what's the proper word for that right now, but um, I'm gonna take this whole body here, group that, call that body. Let's turn that off. Okay. So 
So that medallion is looking pretty dark. The rest of the body is looking pretty dark. Where's the medallion at? That's right here. And where's my final head? Hey, let's, let's see what it looks like with a shave. It's still pretty sinister. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, let's, let's see. Let's copy this layer. And let's work off of the copy here. Okay, I'll clean that up. And we are just about done here. I'm just Let's copy that just so I can play with it. Now, let's see. Let me try something here. I'm gonna try cutting off the mustache and leaving the goatee and see what see what happens. You know what I <laughs> At the, you know, on second thought, I think I probably kind of like the, um, the mustache a little bit less. But, you know, hey, you live and learn, right? Okay, so the rest of this is really good to go. I'm going to grab this, group this. We're going to um, copy that group, and then we are going to smash it down all together. So, yeah, we have those on two separate layers. We're going to copy that again. And we're going to grab all of this and group it, and we're going to call this our final space opera villain. Um, so let's backtrack a little bit. Um, We started, um, let's turn this group on here, no, let's turn our, so we started right here with this. I did a quick little thumbnail, um, I did a quick little thumbnail, um, and I worked out a bunch of different shapes. These were all really fast. I was exploring, just kind of having fun, just dropping down shape, and then after this, um, that's where I went into... Uh, some of the more exploratory sketches where where I dropped in uh, I did a little sketch here of the body just trying to figure that out and I kind of like this but one of the first things I did when I came back was I said I like this but I don't like the face 
Um, I also didn't like the fact that I had this robe going all the way down to the ground, to the feet. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to give him some pants. I'm going to alter that somehow. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, uh, you know, tweak the head and make it a little bit closer to what I wanted originally. And that's what I did. And as you can see, here is your final. So there you go. Um, hope you guys had fun. Um, I had fun today. I think this design came out really cool. I'm kind of happy with it. Looks like a nice space opera villain. When I put some color down on it, it's going to be even more cool. So maybe I'll put some color down on it next week. Um, or maybe I'll move on to another drawing and give them a whole cast of characters. You'd be the judge of that. Drop me a comment, send me a message, give me some feedback. You guys can look me up on the gram, as the kids call it, or Instagram. You can look me up. My handle is drawaholic1124. That's drawaholic, D R A W A H O L I C 1124. Drawaholic1124 is my Instagram page. I'm probably most active there. You can also find me on our station under Michael Buffington, um, but I'm probably more active on Instagram. Find me there, look me up, add me, follow me. Um, I drop lots of gems on there that I don't drop on here. Lots of uh, stuff on paper. Actually, most of the stuff that I put on Instagram is on paper. Um, keep drawing, keep pushing no matter where you're at. You know, if you keep working consistently, you will see progress because success is consistent effort over time. So I hope you guys had fun. Um, thanks again to Wake Up uh, Wacom for allowing us to have this wonderful Cintiq to draw on. I hope you guys, if you guys can uh, afford it, will go and get yourself one because it's a great investment if you're an artist. And trust me, when you get those freelance jobs, it'll pay itself back very soon. And it's a tax write-off. So anyway, I hope you guys had fun drawing with me today. I had fun. Uh, can't wait to see you guys again next week. Take care.